I'm Matt Mason. On tonight's episode of the Rambler Sports Locker, heartbreak in overtime. Also, we hear from a band of wolves, and we try to get to the bottom of what animal Sycamore Sam truly is. These stories and more, coming soon. Rebecca Vandevener here at the second day of Arch Madness with Amelia Ickes. Amelia, tell us a little bit about the third game of the day. Yeah, so in the third game tonight, um, number two seed Loyola fell to number seven Valparaiso. This is the first time that Valparaiso has ever beaten Loyola since joining the Missouri Valley Conference, and it is the first time in the Missouri Valley Conference tournament history that the number one seed and the number two seed, which was Loyola this evening, lost in the quarterfinals. Wow, okay, so can you tell us a little bit about the trends of the game? Yeah, I would say that the number one trend of the game was inconsistency. Uh, Loyola went into the second half with a 14-point lead, and they actually increased that to an 18-point lead uh, early on in the second, but they quickly lost that, um, and neither team was particularly strong in the offense. And I would say that the biggest issue of the game tonight was Loyola's Achilles heel that has existed the entire season, which is missing their free throws. This game, Loyola just made 14 of 27 attempts. That's 51.9% uh, of their free throws were made. Meanwhile, Valparaiso actually made 85.7% of their free throws, and that's another thing that gave them a little bit of a competitive edge tonight against Loyola. Okay, so Amelia, who was the star player of this game? Yeah, so even though Loyola did fall to Valparaiso, I would give the star player uh, to Keith Clemens. I think that he really showed up. He was on fire tonight. He actually uh, recorded a season best 28 points, and I think that was his career best as well. And he hit five of six three-pointers that really helped Loyola get that lead early on, even though they uh, couldn't see it to the end. Okay, thank you, Amelia. Connor Bergen went to the press conference after the game, so we're going to go to him for more. I'm Connor Bergen reporting from the Enterprise Center after the Loyola Ramblers final post-game press conference of the season. The press conference was a somber one as Loyola was the second team to catch the upset bug in the quarterfinals of Arch Madness. Now, head coach Porter Moser said that it was the team's poor free throw shooting that ultimately cost them the game. Moser said that you simply cannot win at this stage shooting 50% from the line. Moser said that free throw shooting had been a, an Achilles heel for the team all season and it finally caught up with them at Arch. Moser also credited Valpo with making winning plays late in the game. He uh, specifically pointed out senior John Kaiser calling him the best player on the floor. Junior center Cameron Krovic for the Ramblers said while the loss was disappointing, the team does have a lot, of, uh, a lot of familiar faces coming back next season to make another run at it. And Krovic is right, the team moves into the offseason only losing one senior. Reporting for the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Connor Bergen. Thanks, Connor. There was a familiar sound playing courtside during the Loyola game. Shelby Kluver caught up with the band to see what it meant to travel with the pack. When it comes to our Loyola may not be playing at home, but there's one way that it can always be like a spirit of dead seal. Because I'm a spirit leader, like I'm one of the spirit leaders for the band, so it's my number one priority. <laughs> Sophomore Olivia Lolly is on her second trip to Arch with Loyola's pep band. It's really just making sure all the energy is up and we're giving um, the men and women's teams the energy they need and that really helps them, I think, in the tournaments. Whether it's through creative signs, original cheers, or incredible music, the band is always there to cheer on the Ramblers. Band director Patrick Rocks isn't shy about how proud he is of his players. They have so much passion for the team. They know all the players' first and last names, lots about them, cheer for the team all the time in win or loss. So um, it's on the kids for really bringing the energy with them all the time. No matter what happens to the team during Arch, Loyola knows they'll have a full section of students to yell, hey baby, whenever they need it. And really, what better motivation is there to make it to the big dance than a little music? Shelby Kluver, Rambler Sports Locker. Thanks, Shelby. Connor Bergen joins us now to tell us a little bit about the last matchup of the night. Yeah, so the last matchup of the night was between the number six seed Missouri State Bears versus the number three seed Indiana State Sycamores, and we had our third big upset of the quarterfinals. 
Uh, the, in, the Missouri State Bears took down the Sycamores by a score of 78 to 61. Just like similar to the, the upset of Northern Iowa earlier in the day, it was not only an upset, it was a blowout. Uh, the Bears controlled this game basically from the get-go. They had grabbed their first lead at 12 uh, to 11, um, about midway through the first half, and they never let go of it throughout the rest of the game. And they did this mainly through their presence in the paint. They outscored the Sycamores 40 to 22 in the paint, and then they had a huge boost from their bench. They actually outscored the Sycamores 35 to 6 in bench points, which was a huge difference in the game. Uh, and in the second half, uh, they were able to establish a double-digit lead. And when it looked like Indiana State was closing in on the gap, I think they got it to about seven points. Uh, the the Bears went on a 11-0 run, and they pushed their lead out to 63 to 42 with with under eight minutes to play, and really slammed the door shut on that run. Okay, so Connor, can you tell us who the star players of this game were? Yeah, for the Bears, it was their big man Gage Pruham. Uh, he was the diff he was a big difference in the game. Uh, he was the reason why their inside game was working so well. And on a night where their three point shots weren't falling that w uh, that much, especially in the first half, he was uh, the real catalyst of their offense. And then uh, on a night where their bench played so well, they had three players score in double figures. Lamont West was the leading scorer of that bunch, who uh, led them with 14 points. Okay, thank you, Connor. Eric Moran went to the press conference after the game. We're going to go to him for more. I'm standing here on the sky deck of the Enterprise Center at the, after the Missouri State Bears defeated the Indiana State Sycamores by a score of 78-51. to 51. After the game, head coach Dana Ford said that he was proud of how his team played. Going into the week, he emphasized to his team the importance of starting strong in the second half, and he believed that his team did. At, at, after the game, he was asked about his team's chances going into Arch Madness now that teams like Loyola and UNI were both eliminated. He said that they would be taking it one possession at a time, and he, was, and he is only thinking about the first possession of the next game against Valparaiso. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Eric Moran. Thanks, Eric. In a conference full of interesting mascots, one left us quite confused. RSL reporter Matt Mason took to courtside to try to understand who Sycamore Sam really is. We all know and love Lou Wolf of Loyola fame, but have you heard of Sycamore Sam? He's the Indiana State mascot who's playing against Missouri State behind me right now. Indiana State has gone through a lot of mascots before switching to Sam a little over 20 years ago. In 1921, the student body voted the team to be named the Sycamores because of the abundance of sycamore trees in the area. Then, in the late 60s, ISU was represented by mascots called Chief Quibachi and the Indian Princess. These mascots were dropped in 1989 after ob objections over its use of Native American caricature. The design for Sycamore Sam was decided through a design contest and premiered in 1995. However, there's much debate over what Sycamore Sam really is. A squirrel, a coyote, a wolf? We asked some ISU fans and Sycamore Sam himself about the mascot's identity. I'm here with Mallory and Cody, and the world is wondering, what is Sycamore Sam? He is a woodland creature. He's a woodland creature. So he's not a coyote, not a squirrel, it's not like a, a wolf? Mix. It's a mix. Yeah. yeah. I'm here with Sycamore Sam, and the world is wondering, what are you? A coyote, a squirrel, a wolf? The world wants to know. Yes. Yes to all three. Yes to all three. You heard it from the man himself, Sycamore Sam. I'm here with Jennifer, Indiana State fan, and I was wondering, what animal do you think that Sycamore Sam is? It's, I mean, I kind of thought of fox at first. I didn't know, or wolf. I think he is a creature of the woods. You heard it here. A Back to you. A woodland creature. Well, there you have it. The world may never know. From the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Matt Mason. Back to you. Thanks, Matt. Even though the Ramblers had to hit the road, we'll still be here for the next two days to bring you all the news and updates for the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Rebecca Vandenner.